In a time when every job is sacred and every economic investment a cause to celebrate, Kentucky must be aggressive in identifying and seizing every opportunity. To strengthen our capability in a climate of intense competition, today I am adding two topics to the agenda of the June 15 special session. The first is a group of economic development issues carefully designed to enhance our ability to attract and retain many thousands of jobs in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And the second is an effort to create a mechanism to fund mega projects between Kentucky and Indiana, such as the Louisville Bridges. The economic incentives package has five main parts. One, a long overdue updating of our economic incentives toolbox with a focus on helping existing companies looking to expand facilities and workforces. Two, creating a tax credit program for small businesses. Three, amending the Tourism Development Act to help Kentucky attract a NASCAR Sprint Cup race. Four, expanding an existing tax exemption to improve our chances of hosting future Breeder Cup World Championships. And five, approving a resolution needed to prepare for a proposed advanced battery manufacturing complex in Hardin County, a project that could reshape Kentucky's manufacturing landscape. For the most part, these are issues with broad support throughout the legislature. They are also ones where time is critical. We must act quickly. Let me illustrate that urgency with a story. The other morning, I met with officials from a leading Kentucky manufacturer. They want to bring out a new product line, but their Kentucky facility isn't geared to make that product. They're trying to decide whether to retrofit their facility here in Kentucky, which would be a major undertaking and a major reinvestment in this state, or to go elsewhere to another state. In an economic climate that has been brutal to manufacturers, company officials are wondering whether this state can assist them. Now, if that company moved this project out of state, those jobs would likely be classified as new jobs in that other state and thus eligible for numerous incentives. Most state incentive programs, after all, are geared toward attracting jobs. So, they would likely be welcomed with the proverbial open arms. Here in Kentucky, however, those jobs would be considered retained jobs, since a company is merely expanding and updating. Our programs, for the most part, require job creation or have other parameters that don't apply to a healthy company scenario. My friends, that is a mistake, a mistake that in in these trying times, we cannot afford to continue. Our existing businesses are some of our most precious resources. And I mean not just our top manufacturers, but our small businesses, every small business. We must nurture them and help them, particularly when they are looking to reinvest. We cannot continue to watch other states pirate them away. That's just one example of how our current incentive programs need to be strengthened. Last summer, we conducted a comprehensive assessment of our programs to determine effectiveness and competitiveness. We sought to find gaps in our toolbox, to learn from innovative and creative approaches in other states, to assess whether our programs address emerging needs and trends, and to discover better ways to set up our incentive programs to reward performance. What we found was this. 20 years ago, Kentucky was considered a leader among states in the development of tax-related economic development incentives. But over time, other states have copied our programs and tailored them to improve their usefulness. Kentucky's incentives are currently perceived as being outdated, complicated, and inflexible. We need to update our approach 
to address those issues and to fill gaps in our existing programs. We're currently drafting a bill that will do that. It will, for example, expand the Kentucky Reinvestment Act, which was passed in an effort to assist Ford when it faced a similar need to upgrade its Louisville plant, and which was later used by Toyota in Georgetown. The bill will consolidate existing tax credit programs. It will help companies that make large investments in computer and communication systems, and it will provide opportunities for historic preservation programs and tourism development. This includes creating incentives for the film and theater industry, designed to attract not just movies, but documentaries, television shows, and commercials. Much of this proposal should be very familiar to everybody. It will closely mirror House Bill 229 from the last session, sponsored by Representative Tommy Thompson, which, which substanti substantially passed both chambers, uh, both chambers in the 2009 regular session, but then got bogged down at the last on timing issues. House Bill 229, which included a host of programs known as Incentives for a New Kentucky, or INC, was hashed out after much legislative debate. Thus, we are hopeful of broad support and quick passage. Again, timing is urgent. Every day counts. My economic development people tell me that they are talking to numerous companies right now about projects that could benefit from these changes. Those projects collectively represent thousands of jobs that Kentucky cannot afford to lose. I'm committed to making sure that those projects and others on the horizon happen. We have to be proactive. We cannot dither and leave things to chance or to the market to decide. Companies across the nation are considering their options, and many are being forced to make quick decisions. Every week we delay, every week we delay improvement of our offerings, we risk losing another economic opportunity.